Good morning, everybody. It was so great to see some of you at worship and Sunday school this morning. But for those of you who weren't able to be with us when we met live on Zoom, I wanted to share with you some of the things that we did in Sunday school. So we met here in Little Hale, and you guys aren't here. We usually sit in this big circle together, but I've tried to get some of our friends here. I've got fish and rabbit and the little white tiger and Bertha the chicken riding a dinosaur. It's not the same as having you here, but we're doing our best. So we started our time together remembering that church is not the building. Church is the people, and you are the people, which means that no matter where you are, you are church right now. And no matter where you are, God is with you and in you and around you, surrounding you with love and peace and hope and joy in this moment and the love of this community. So we do not have to feel alone, even though we are not in church together. We are all church together, no matter where we are. So we started the way that we do every week in Sunday school, which is listening for God in the quiet. And I played our singing bowl, which I'm gonna do now. So I'll do it twice and listen and raise your hands when you stop hearing the sound, okay? Here it is, the first time. Can you hear your breath and hear God in the quiet? Let's do it one more time. good. I hear the birds outside, and I hear the clock ticking, and I hear God all around us. The next thing that we did is we sang one of our songs, and the song that we sang is Peace Like a River, and we did it with the hand movement. So everybody stand up, stand up, and stretch up to the sky. Stretch, stretch, stretch all out, and we're gonna sing together, okay? We're gonna sing. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Okay, we're gonna try the one that's really hard together, okay? I've got peace, love, joy like a river ocean fountain, I've got peace, love, joy like a river ocean fountain, I've got peace, love, joy like a river ocean fountain in my soul. I've got peace, love, joy like a river ocean fountain, I've got peace, love, joy like a river ocean fountain, I've got peace, love, joy like a river ocean fountain in my so, ooh, good job. Oh, I'm out of breath now. So, with all of that peace, love, and joy inside of us, we're going to turn to our story today. And our story is one that we in Sunday School know really, really well because we spent a lot of the time in the fall talking about the Ten Commandments about how almost half of the commandments tell us how to love God and the other half tell us how to love our neighbors and that Jesus gave us two commandments that kind of summed up all the ten and Jesus tells us that the most important commandment is to love God and the second most important commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so I'm going to read our story today from the um, 
book, The Children's Bible, that Archbishop Desmond Tutu um, wrote, and share the way that um, Archbishop Tutu tells this story. And he says, sometimes it seems like there are so many rules. It's often hard to know which ones are most important. In Jesus' time, people argued about which rule was most important to God. Some of the elders, bent over with wisdom, heard Jesus teaching his followers. The elder thought to himself, wow, this guy really knows what he's talking about. The elder leaned on his cage and scratched his white hair. You seem very wise. Tell me, what is the most important rule of all? Here's Jesus. There are two, Jesus replied. The first is to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is to love everyone, to love your neighbors as much as you love yourself. The elder nodded and said, you are right. The greatest gift we can offer God is to love God and love all God's children. And the little prayer here at the bottom says, Dear God, fill me with love. Isn't that nice? <clears throat> so what we talked about during Sunday school today was how it is that we keep loving God and loving our neighbors in this time. And this would be a good conversation for you to have with your families or to think about on your own. So how is it that we love God and how is it that we love our neighbors? And our neighbors include our families that we're living with at home right now. So some of the ideas that people came up with were that we can pray for one another, we can be kind to each other, we can um, think about and pray and keep in touch with our friends and offer them our, our kindness and our support. And I'm going to share another way when we talk about the activities you can go and do right now as well. Um, we, I had, and I'll do that now actually. The activities that we were supposed to do in Sunday school today that we had planned were that the kids were in charge of our reception time. Now we can't meet together here in the church building. So we aren't going to get to put out and make food here and make a spread for everybody in the church. But we can feed the people at home. So we remember that Jesus, one of the ways that Jesus showed God's love all the time was to feed people. We remember that Jesus fed 5,000 hungry people once, if you remember that story, that even at the very near the end of his life, he gathered with his friends to feed them. So feeding and feeding hungry people and sharing food together is really important. So what I want you guys to do today is to think about some way that you can make food or share food with your families. So Sam, my son Sam, got on and showed us how to, he's gonna make these special crackers with cheese and apples. So think about some way that you could make food or snack for your family today. Also in this Sunday School lesson, which is on the website, there's lots of ways that we can share food with our neighbors who may be hungry our neighbors at Common Cathedral, our neighbors here in Newton who um, may be home and may not have enough food in their, in their houses. So think about how you might be able to really share food and help feed people in our community this week too. And the other thing that I hope you will do, I'm back. <laughs> this is my Easter basket. And when we met today in Sunday school, we shared prayers for one another and our world and um, shared the names of people that we wanted to keep in prayer, shared things that we're worried about, shared things that we're grateful for. And this year, rather than putting that plastic grass in my Easter basket, I am going to line my Easter basket with prayers. And so I want to encourage you to find your Easter basket this year and to find pieces of paper, it doesn't matter what color or how big they are, or what they look like, and to write prayers on them. So we pray for special people, for people that might be being sick, and all those prayers right now are in my basket, and I'll keep filling up this basket through the week, um, all the way up until Easter. 
and I hope you will join me in that practice. So that is all for now. I hope you all are well. I'm sending you a big hug from everybody here, all of your friends here at church, and I look forward to seeing you. Maybe it's story time on Thursday morning or at Sunday school next week or at the middle school party on Friday or some other time soon. But know that no matter where you are, even if we aren't seeing each other, um, God loves you and your community here at Union Church loves you and we are all here together. All right, blessings to you for your week. Bye-bye.